Hello everyone, my name is Dharish Soni and you are watching Drishti IES. In this episode, we will be discussing about the UPSC 2024 paper and uh, particularly general science and technology section. Uh, we have gone for the you know whole paper analysis uh, in a live session where we have seen the patterns etc. And it was told that we will be coming up with the answers and the analysis later. So here we are, we will be talking about the general science and technology and similarly other has also been discussed. Okay. So uh, let's start with the first question which was asked in science and technology. We will be following set D. Uh, we will be following set D over here. So please keep a note on that. Okay, so consider the following statement battery storage, biomass generators, fuel cells, rooftop solar photovoltaic units. How many of the above are considered distributed energy resources? Okay, so when we are talking about the distributed energy resources, these are basically you can say smaller generation units which are located on the consumer side of meter. Okay, basically these are either they will be on the rooftop or they will be on the land of a particular consumer okay so such energy sources when we are talking about these are basically called distributed energy resources okay so here you can see battery storage that can be installed at a particular place of a particular person's land or a house okay biomass generators small biomass generator can also be installed fuel cells can be installed and rooftop solar photovoltaic cells can also be stored okay so here you can see the one two and three all four would be your right answer okay now why distributed energy resources because uh, when we are talking about the current government or the you can say after the you know issues of the climate change etc so the focus is on the you know greener energy or you can say uh, clean energy okay so that is why such terms has been in use and these terms are asked when we are talking about upsc upsc has this pattern of asking the terminologies which are there in news in the science and technology okay so that is all four now moving further question number 79 consider the following plants groundnut horse gram soya bean okay so how many of the above belong to the pea family now pea family you know that these are basically beans etc okay so when we are talking about all three the groundnut horse gram and the soybean these all three are basically or you can say from the pea family okay when we are talking about this house uh, horse gram that is basically a kind of you can say neglected or a lesser known uh, legume but the thing is it is also from the pea family groundnut that is uh, quite prominent you know that when we are talking about groundnut we are the uh, second largest producer of the groundnut in the world and soya bean soya bean is also you can say you must have heard about the edible oils okay soya bean is one of them uh, so he is a seed of the edible oil okay so that is there so all of them all three are your uh, you know answers basically option c would be your right answer moving further 88 which of the following words or the phrases is most appropriately used to denote an interoperable network of 3D virtual world that can be assessed simultaneously by millions of users who can exert proprietary rights over the virtual items. Okay. Now they are saying that 3D virtual worlds. Okay. So cryptography cannot be your answer. Okay. Because this is basically a technology. Okay. Then uh, coming to a virtual matrix now matrix is talking about on a you know very smaller scale okay if we see metaverse metaverse uh, is something like uh, if there is a universe something like that on a bigger picture which is using your you can say virtual words or the technology etc that is related more to the you can say metaverse okay so and they are nothing they are talking about big data over here so that is incorrect option c would be a right answer when we are talking about this metaverse so basically we are saying that this is an emerging 3d enabled digital space technology wherein uh, we are using these uh, virtual reality augmented reality and other uh, advanced kind of international and the semiconductor technologies in, in that we will have an experience or we will create an environment which will give you a feeling that you are into that particular world uh, despite being in the real world okay so that is basically your metaverse these are the you can see uh, if you talk about the uh, you know various movies which has which are there in the sci-fi section so such uh, movies talks about this metaverse okay now moving further question number 91 with reference to the radio isotope uh, thermoelectric generators rtgs consider the following statements okay now rtgs are miniature fission reactors second is rtgs are used for powering the onboard space uh, system of spacecraft then RTGs can use uh, plutonium 238 which is byproduct of the weapon development okay now when we are talking about these RTGs okay or the radio isotope thermal uh, thermoelectric in, uh, electric generators so basically these are electric generators okay so when we are talking about the fission reactors okay these uh, when we are talking about these RTGs these are basically your 
कॉम्पैक्ट स्पेसक्राफ्ट पावर सिस्टम ओके वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्पेस क्राफ्ट देर इज दिस पावर सिस्टम विच वॉज सेंट विद डेम थ्रो दैट दिस स्पेस क्राफ्ट कैन वर्क प्रॉपरली सो दीज आर बेसिकली योर आर टी जीज ओके सो वी कैन से दैट इट इज नॉट अ फिजन रिएक्टर दीज आर बेसिकली यू कैन से यू कैन पावर सिस्टम विच आर यूज इन द स्पेस क्राफ्ट ओके देन इफ वी सी the second statement rtgs are used for the powering uh, the on board systems of the space craft so this is correct because i just explained it to you then rtgs can use plutonium 238 okay uh, which is a by product of the weapon development okay so that is true plutonium or any kind of radioactive uh, substance uh, if that is enriched to a particular amount that can be used in the uh, power generation okay so 2 and 3 is your correct answer over here option uh, b would, would be your right answer okay now moving to the question number 92 consider the following statement statement 1 is giant star lives much longer than the dwarf stars okay so basically here they are saying that if there is a giant star and if there is a dwarf star which will you know go for a much longer period of time okay now with the statement or like with uh, layman's logic you might you know mark it correct but it is incorrect because when we are talking about these giant stars okay so these giant stars have masses which are you know higher than nearly 8 to uh, 100 times uh, higher than the mass of our sun okay obviously because of which they are hotter they have dense cores okay they will have uh, much uh, hydrogen fuel in their core so since they are having much hydrogen fuel so they will be burning faster okay they will be actually utilizing these uh, cores faster they will be having these uh, uh, nuclear reactions over there where in a very fast mode so ultimately they will exhaust that very fast okay so ultimately dwarf stars which are having lesser fuel or you can say they will survive longer and these giant stars will actually uh, you know end with the fuel uh, you know at a very shorter time okay and we are talking about the relative time over here not very shorter time we are saying that in relation to the dwarf star they will have a shorter life span okay so that is incorrect in such questions where two statements are given and then you have they have asked you something like this if you eliminate one statement then you will arrive at the answer because if uh, you can say statement 1 is incorrect statement 2 is correct so option d would be your right answer over here okay now second statement let's see compared to the dwarf stars giant stars have greater rate of nuclear reaction so obviously because of which they exhaust their fuel earlier okay so that is there now question number 93 which of the following is synthesized in human body that dilates the blood vessels and increase the blood flow okay so nitric oxide nitrous oxide nitrogen uh, oxide and nit nitrogen pentoxide okay so if we look at it uh, option a is the right answer but if uh, when we are talking about the nitrogen pentoxide obviously we don't have we did not heard much of it when we are talking about the static portion so you can eliminate that okay if it is about nitrous oxide and the nit nitrogen dioxide we have you know read a lot about it so there are chances that we might heard of it if something like that was there okay that is the basic elimination te technique if you can use it otherwise uh, if we talk about the uh, concept over here when we talk about this nit uh, nitric oxide these are basically essential molecules that are required for our overall health okay uh, so these basically nitric oxides they send signals to the blood vessels to relax and when they relax they actually expand okay since they are expanding because of which the blood flow will increase over there okay so this will affect uh, this will allow the blood nutrients and oxygen to flow freely you know inside your every part of your body okay so basically that is why you can say that uh, they are having this effect on the blood vessels and increase the blood flow okay now coming to the next that is 94 consider the following activities identification of narcotics on passengers at airport or aircraft monitoring of precipitations tracking the migration of animals how many of the above activities can the radar be used okay so when we are talking about this radar these are basically radio detections and ranging okay so uh, they are using this electromagnetic waves to identify certain things okay so such that can be done for the narcotics that can be done in case of you know monitoring the precipitation and tracking the migration of animals okay so for all of them it can be done now if we are going for the science and technology questions and if they ask you how it can be used or where it can be used there are high chances that that can be used everywhere because science uh, can uh, the utilization or the use of science can be done in every aspect okay now moving further question number 96 in which of the following 
are hydrogels used okay now controlled drug delivery in the patients uh, then mobile air conditioning systems then uh, next is preparation of industrial lubricants okay so when we are talking about the hydrogels they can be used in all of them option d would be your right answers okay uh, basically when we are talking about the hydrogels these are basically tunable prop they are having these tunable properties and they control the degradation and the ability to protect uh, uh, labial drugs okay that the drugs that are destroyed in the acidic environments okay so for that basically it is used hydrogels okay so if there is an acidic environment and a drug has this uh, you can say potential that it can be destroyed okay so to protect such thing these hydrogels are used okay uh, then when i talk about the mobile air conditioning systems and the preparation of the industrial lubricants see these are lubricants okay and these are gels so there are chances that that can be used in that as well so option d would be your right answer now moving further question number 97 which of the following is the exhaust pipe emission from the fuel cell electric vehicle powered by hydrogen okay so logically if speaking if we uh, you know think about this particular question so in the fuel cell we have seen that mostly oxygen will be used at as as an input as well as uh, it will be the byproduct as well okay so from the uh, you can say one side it will be entered inside it and then uh, with uh, oxygen there will be water which is you know acting as a by uh, byproduct okay now this byproduct of o2 oxygen will be reused as an input okay so that is why it will not go out of the uh, you can say um, exhaust pipe okay only h2o or the water vapor that will go outside the pipe okay so option d would be your right answer over here and anyway we have to choose any one of them so oxygen is not your answer water vapor are your answer okay now Question number 98, recently the term pumped storage hydropower is actually and uh, appropriately discussed in the context of which of the following, irrigation of the terraced crop fields, lift irrigation of the cereal crops, long duration energy storage and rainwater harvesting system, okay. Now here, if you just look at the question, the answer is given in the question, okay. Uh, as I told you earlier also, science and tech, there are chances that they will ask you about these terms and terminologies, okay. Most of the, uh, you know, questions which we have seen that they have asked about the terminologies like metaverse, okay. So, focus on those aspects if you are preparing for UPSC. Now, coming to the uh, question over here, answer is given in the question itself, okay. They have said that pumped storage hydropower, where uh, you are basically discussed and in which context it is discussed. Now, irrigation of the terraced crop fields, okay, that is one thing. Second is lift irrigation of cereal crops so basically they are asking about only irrigation over here okay second is rainwater harvesting system again they are asking about a storage hydropower okay so basically they are asking about something related to the storage so here you can see that long duration energy storage this is the only option which is talking about storage okay these are certain things which are talking about you know uh, uh, use of it there might be a use of pumped storage hydropower maybe in uh, you know irrigation etc but the thing is that is basically they are talking about a system they are talking about a process here they are talking about the storage and we have to answer about a pumped storage hydropower okay so option c would be your right answer over here okay other than that uh, when we are talking about the pumped storage hydropower it is a type of hydroelectric energy storage that uses water stored in the reservoirs at different elevation to generate electricity okay so basically it is for the generation of the electricity and for that you require the storage of the water and that water will be used in the generation okay so option c is your right answer over here okay so that is about uh, you know uh, 98 question now coming to the 99 that is membrane bioreactors are often discussed in the context of a assisted reproductive technologies b drug delivery nanotechnologies c vaccine production technologies d waste water uh, treatment technologies okay now again it is also a term which has been asked by upsc now they are talking about the membrane okay so in the reproductive technologies we are not using any kind of membranes etc when we are talking about the logical if we see in the wastewater treatment okay for filtering that particular thing we require membranes okay and for them we are using these bio uh, you know uh, uh, you can say agents etc okay so that is basically bio uh, membrane bioreactors which are used in the wastewater treatment technologies so option uh, d would be your right answer when we talk about this you can say that uh, the mbr or the membrane bioreactor technology then is an kind of an efficient hybrid uh, traditional uh, or you can say efficient of the hybrid of a traditional biological wastewater treatment and the modern membrane system which we are using in the municipal uh, wastewater treatment so basically here they are using the traditional plus uh, bio 
reactors uh, in this particular technology so that uh, they can go for the wastewater treatment in the municipalities and the industrial wastewater okay so that is about it with that i would uh, end this session over here uh, if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe it have a nice day thank you for more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications